ओम श्री साई राम एंड वेलकम टू द स्टूडियोज ऑफ श्री सत्य साई मीडिया सेंटर द डिवोटीज फ्रॉम यूनाइटेड किंगडम आर हियर इन प्रशांत नियम नियरली थ्री हंड्रेड ऑफ दैम एंड दे आर बास्किंग इन द ब्लिस दैट इज प्रशांति फॉर ऑलमोस्ट ए वीक एंड वी डी नॉट वॉन्ट टू मिस कैप्चरिंग देयर रिफ्लेक्शंस एंड देयर इम्प्रेशंस एंड विथआउट the best to get it from is from the young adults and that's how we have ritesh raghav nishant and sai prashant today with us to share how does it feel being in prashant nilayam but let me tell you before they came to prashant nilayam it was not just these five days that they are experiencing in this divine hamlet the preparation for it began many many weeks and months before and what is really touching is the sadhana that they have done to come to prashant nilayam for this 5 days 6 days that they are here they have spent 5 6 months doing a lot of inner engineering and maybe we should start with from where it all began so can i ask you radha so you tell me what way you started culturing yourself to come into this divine home prashanti so i knew from the beginning that i would i wanted to get involved with the vedam program and as part of the sadhana meetings we were given these tasks that we could fulfill to better improve ourselves sort of like a spiritual diary and one of those was daily prayer and another one was waking up early in the morning so i thought i would combine them and especially in the mornings in the uk it is in january when we started this <laughs> it is the sun doesn't rise for another like 3 hours it, mm. and it's pitch black and for the first few days i struggled to get up i set my alarm for about 5 o'clock 4:55 o'clock just to see if i can because i knew also when i was when i'm here that would be the time for suprabhatam you'd have to be ready by then and it it was tough initially but eventually I I was able to get into a routine where I'd wake up in the morning and just sit down in front of our altar at home and chant um from the books and now it's just I just find it very peaceful and calming especially in the morning when it's very quiet and not many people are awake and the noise is low and you can you can feel at peace and uh if because you've you've done the you've done something positive in the morning straight from the beginning and the negatives don't hopefully affect you as much for the rest of the day so a day well begun is half done <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> and a day well begun actually puts you in the proper spirit right you, mm-hmm. the day is long for you you've planned your day you know as they say you, you know plan out your work and work out your plan and i think who, whoever uh, is an early riser in fact if you look at the lives of a lot of achievers in today's times you will find that most of them you know you, you, you take the ceos of major corporations also all of them want that me time in the morning and i think swami has told us not just to have that me time but also do the sadhana of omkaram of suprabhatam and i think that way you know we awaken the divine energy within us so so beautiful that you know you have got into it and and these are practices you know initially it might be a little difficult but once you get into it you'll you will start loving it mm-hmm. and there'll be days when you don't do it you'll miss it mm-hmm. <laughs> and we, and we'll slowly reach there did you attend mm-hmm. the uh, nagar sankirtan and uh, the early morning uh, wipes of prashantam do you try to absorb that yes and um how we are doing it here is we are having suprabhatam above the north indian canteen in the morning at the same time so devotees you know some people won't have to walk as much as as far mm. in the morning mm. so we are having suprabhatam there and then afterwards we would join the nagar sankirtan Nagar-Sankirtan. groups and i've dragged him along <laughs> to- <laughs> how was the experience siddhish <laughs> yes it was it's i i, I almost forgot The, the the sound of the cuckoo birds in prashanti in in the morning is just so pleasant so mm. so peaceful mm. um and i ended up even though i didn't put on i didn't want to admit to my brother here that uh, side brother here that i was um, being dragged along but i did start enjoying the super bathms in the morning so mm. yes really enjoyed that hmm the mornings of prashanti are very beautiful right mm. especially uh, the birds chirping and uh, i think the nagar sankirtan is something 
and that stays on mm. uh, just walking and breathing in because you know in the puttaparthi air is one of the purest airs you know even, even if you look at just climatically mm-hmm. um, the air quality if it in delhi it is uh, 100 in puttaparthi it is like 18 19 so it, it is one of the purest airs that you can breathe <laughs> apart from it being very divine uh, so yeah prashant and nishant you would like to share something about your preparation for the trip Sure, um, Sairam. So, in terms of my preparation for the trip, so ov- obviously we started maybe six months ago or so, having these sadhana meetings and discussing the preparation. And so I thought to myself, what could I do with the time, um, with the remaining six months, and how could I better improve myself? And at that time, I felt that I was trying to relax or take time for myself just by being on my phone and. maybe talking to people or maybe just scrolling through social media applications and so i decided that it would be better use of my time to delete those social media applications and maybe reflect on my day reflect on my time and be thankful to swami for all the positives and everything that i have in my life and so i set myself a goal of th- thinking and reflect and reflecting on everything that had happened during the day and taking three pieces um or three things that had happened throughout the day that i was grateful for that had gone well um thinking about why they had gone well and then making sure to thank swami for those things in particular in general in my prayer every day i do try to thank swami of course i start by thanking swami and then go on to just you know have conversation with swami um about how my day was about uh you know my goals and things like that but i always felt that when i thank swami i just say you know thank you for everything thank you for my family thank you for this and that but then i thought if i could break that down further and say each day you know thank you for this particular part of my project going smoothly it would really help me to it would help me to stay positive throughout the day you know because i could think in that moment swami is with me swami will make sure that this part of my project will go well swami swami will make sure that this meeting will go well and you know even in the moment i might not think it has gone well but ultimately the divine blessing will come and ensure that everything goes to plan and everything comes good wow so prashant's mantra has been think and thank <laughs> <laughs> think of swami and thank him for everything and you did it very diligently during this period and the other thing that you mentioned about you restricting yourself on the social media you you, you deleted your social media presence in, yes. in many platforms and that that that's awesome i think um, uh, not many can do that uh, not many can really say i will be completely out of it <laughs> because sometimes you know you have all this fomo the fear of missing out yes. and all that Uh, you feel you know if, if i'm not on social media uh, it's like i don't exist <laughs> my existence is at stake but to be able to take that decision uh, to better utilize your time i think is 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 quite um, a courageous and quite a a um, determined effort to offer something uh, very beautiful to bhagwan and i think discipline is uh, not so easy uh, but um, as they say if the pain of discipline uh, is uh, one ton uh, the pain of regret is uh, 100 tons <laughs> so better we left <laughs> a little bit the pain of discipline and and later have a lot of fun actually mm. and I, i and i'm sure prashant is having a lot of fun in prashant in him 100% <laughs> as as you mentioned it's very difficult to stay off social media you know in the uk everyone else is on social media they'll be talking about various things that are going on things that you might have missed you know by not seeing someone's story etc but being in prashanti having the knowledge that i have you know deleted my social media and have taken the time to reflect and think about all the positives and be grateful to swami it it makes me feel at peace here in prashanti that i have offered something up to swami and only in the depth of silence mm. the voice of god can be heard and i think 
before we can go to inner silence first there has to be outer silence <laughs> and and i think that is a very very uh, beautiful uh, step i really congratulate you for that um and you want to continue that at least for some more time i probably will just mm-hmm. because i think being here in prashanti it sort of it sort of you know extends the peace that you feel and so you want to take that vibration back to the uk and live with that vibration as much as you possibly yeah. can yeah. and to maintain that energy I'll probably yeah. stay off I mean the good thing about it is yeah even if you want to go back to social media you can but you know that it's there in, in you that if you decide some day to just be out of it you can be out of it mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's you're not in control of that what i did was uh there are settings now in all major phones where it will tell you when you've gone past you can it can enable it to put a time limit on mm-hmm. apps and i put one on youtube and safari which were the two main apps mm-hmm. that i was using so i set youtube to half an hour and wow. safari to an hour wow. and so if i if i get to that limit it will warn me saying you're at an hour do you want to continue and at that point you can press yes continue <laughs> but you just feel guilty <laughs> mm, you feel yeah, so guilty and yeah. even, and it'll remind you every 5 minutes you sure you sure <laughs> like no no <laughs> and and you know uh, one thing is you want to do it and the second thing is you know you want to do it for swami mm. you want to do it for this pilgrimage so that gives sort of an extra push and extra mm. joy something to look forward to you know you're coming for this pilgrimage and you want to tell swami i've done this <laughs> sadhana before coming right mm. and and he rewards you in, in in his own way when you do something really very beautiful isn't it how how has it been for you nishant you're coming to prashant land for the first time if i'm right yeah yes, so how has this whole experience of uh, breathing the prashant the air has been it's it's been really nice it's been um to be honest, i didn't i came in with uh, an open mind not like trying to have too many expectations because especially coming on a pilgrimage is very different to uh, come by yourself or just like well not with a a big group but like just the first day um going into darshan just felt surreal just being in the hall for the first time I've seen pictures videos but it's just it's not the same compared to when you actually sat there it's just a whole different feeling so it's been nice but being it's still being with the group has been nice to have all these people with me um my sai family with me it's been um it's been a nice experience so so far yeah so th- there's a uh, term for people who go off gadgets uh to remote areas and just to be off digital um stuff so digital detox uh, as it is called and um, it's called braincation where they just put off everything and just stay there you know in that place and i have found a lot of people who do that they come to prashant nilay mm. and they put off all their gadgets no ipad no iphone nothing just go within to the eye <laughs> <laughs> not the little eye but the big eye <laughs> that that was that, that that feeling that you can't describe mm-hmm. that that sort of that moment of clarity that that sort of that spiritual moment so to speak is what was driving me that the memory of those moments especially I think the first time I felt such a moment was <clears throat> in 2016 mm-hmm. in the World Youth Festival. The first time I could chant um, Rudram in front of in front of um, the Samadhi. Mm. And just in that moment those vibrations that that I felt that memory um made me just instantly say yes to coming on this on this pilgrimage. Wow. Um so um I remember in in November when they announced the pilgrimage at the national birthday celebrations my mother and I looked across each other and we said Yeah, yeah, we're going. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm. And for me it was it was that kind of moment. Mm. Um mm. there was there was also the need for in terms of driving me on to this pilgrimage, a need for a spiritual recharge, a spiritual reset. Um mm. after after the covid lockdowns and mm. I'm really glad to to have gotten involved in in the pilgrimage. It's really taken my mind off the difficulties of mm. of the situation at home. Mm. Um Yeah, so recharging. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, Rech- recharging the spiritual battery. Um, yes, definitely. So you can so you can go back now uh rejuvenated. Yes, that's <laughs> agreed. Yes. <laughs> And uh, Prashant for you, uh 
what has been uh, your pull to bhagwan i've been very very um fortunate to have many experiences throughout my lifetime um with with bhagwan um the first memory i have of you know um, of baba is just being sat in our center bhajan um i was very very young um and i would attend these bhajans every thursday and that's how i sort of slowly integrated into the sai fold by attending these bhajans and you know when you're young you don't really know too much you're just sitting there and then slowly you start learning how to clap properly and then slowly you start enjoying the bhajans and you start you know moving your head and these things and it was through bhajans that i really started to enjoy being a part of the sai organization and as i grew up um i would of course take part in balvikas i would take part in all the plays the dramas um and i was fortunate enough to be a part of a few pilgrimages now i think this is my fourth pilgrimage oh. um with the uk group <clears throat> my first pilgrimage was back in 2004 so i was 6 years old and i still remember you know we would have rehearsals every day very intense um and on the day of our program i was in the front row of our curtain call and obviously in 2004 swami was still with us and that day he decided to come onto the stage and walk past our row wow and you know stand among us and and for me that was such a huge experience personally in my head i knew that in previous performances when he would come on stage he would sort of stop and talk to a few of the boys or maybe materialize something so in my head i was standing there oh i was you know i sat there in the front row praying and praying that swami would come and talk to me or look at me give me some sort of indication you know um but but on that day unfortunately he didn't he came and he spoke to the boy sat next to me and as happy as i was for him i was obviously burning inside mm. with pain just praying <laughs> swami please please you know mm. give me some indication um but no it wasn't to be mm. and so after the performance had finished everyone was you know extremely happy with how it went they were all talking and taking pictures and celebrating um when we came back to our north block um unfortunately i ran upstairs and i was just at the balcony sort of sulking and um. crying admittedly um that i didn't have this interaction with swami later on though we were called into the interview room mm-hmm. um by swami we were very blessed to be inside there and inside of course swami was talking to us he was um you know doing swami things he was materializing chains and rings um and obviously everyone inside was just wowed by this amazing presence in front of us and he would also walk along the aisle up and down and allow devotees to um you know have pada namaskaram and touch his feet i i myself was sat maybe i was maybe the third person from the aisle and as a 6 year old i i couldn't really reach his feet and so again i was really really upset really really upset that i couldn't get the pada namaskaram no at one point he went back up the aisle and he stopped if maybe a feet or two away from me and he put his hand on my head as he was speaking and then he continued walking and you know throughout the rest of that time in the interview room i was just in absolute bliss extremely happy and i to be honest i just couldn't wait to go back and tell everyone about this experience <laughs> um because i was just excited as a 6 year old um and from that moment onwards i just i knew that i had to be part of this organization um and and i just felt that that connection with swami would always be there from that moment onwards but i think it's sweeter when you yearn for it mm. then you earn it <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and he ensures that you know he always does it in a manner that you least expect it mm. but he will always do it and he'll do it in such a way that you know that memory stays because you know if it happens the way you think then you know it becomes a very scripted uh, <laughs> it becomes uh, uh, something uh, that will not leave you with awe but he will always do it but um uh at the end of it will say 
Oz, Swami, awesome you are. You know, I have to love your uncertainty and your uncertainty is so sweet. <laughs> so how has it been for you, Raghav? You are connected to Swami. For me, my, I've, I've been uh, blessed to know of Swami, be in the fold from, right from birth. My grandfather was, was a film representative in in uh, near Madurai, uh, mm. and he he they didn't have much, especially back in the day. His job was to just go around, take the reels from mm-hmm. village to village to cinema theaters mm-hmm. here and there. And he he knew of Swami even back then. This was sixties, seventies, and and he he whenever he wouldn't ha- whenever he didn't have time to go to the temple, he would always keep a picture of Swami. Uh, one of those one of those pictures where Swami's in in this in Sayanam mm-hmm. and uh he would always pray to him before he before he went and Swami would come to Kodakanal which is quite close to Madurai and uh, when I whenever my tata had the time he would go and he would go and try and see him and he, and back in the days there would only be about 6 7 people mm-hmm. so not that many people then at all and one day Swami walked past him and 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 he stopped and my grandfather and um he had five girls mm-hmm. five daughters mm-hmm. and um obviously they were of of an age where they could be married mm-hmm. and weddings are expensive mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. he asked swami you know they say uh, he specifically said when when you're um when you when you have this five daughters even a rich man an arasane andiyavan so even a king will become mm. destitute mm-hmm. uh for to get them to for in their lives to mm. let them progress and you know get them married and all that and swami how how will i be you know i don't have much okay. and uh swami said amo hamarpa so you'll have a wonderful life mm-hmm. and that was true my grandfather he, he didn't there, there were there was day to day difficulties but he didn't struggle in his wow. goals and he lived happily from what mm-hmm. i heard personally i haven't met him but i i you hear his name all the time and all oh, my my mother my aunts mm-hmm. they would share these tales and you know from a young age when you hear these experiences it mm-hmm. it builds it builds the anticipation and my mom amma would say she 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 saw swami in kodakanal as well and just she the way she described it you know uh dehi sharanam was playing in the background and swami would just walk out of the uh you know outside to see the people and it was just they're very good storytellers your parents <laughs> and and your grandparents and uh it 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 really builds the anticipation and i've before i moved to the uk when i was 9 i've had chances to see swami as part of uh, you know uh, as part of the crowd and be there and uh, see him walking past and and it's it's always been you know like you always think so this is god and you you try and connect that mm-hmm. and and um it it's it's always you know seeing the orange robe going past mm-hmm. even even when you're like 7 8 mm-hmm. and it's um it's thrilling so that way i mean it's really such a blessing that you were able to see swami at such close quarters and and at that impressionable age uh, to be uh, so blessed today when you think about it the people who have seen swami uh, who have had that opportunity to be to have got a vibhuti to have got some uh, moment with swami it's it's a microscopic minority right mm-hmm. the number of devotees are increasing by leaps and bounds and everybody is discovering swami and you know so to have had that moment uh is really uh, such a precious blessing and and you got it at an age where you could remember you know you know what you were getting and i think the most powerful thing is the blessing that swami gave to your grandfather and that continues you know a blessing from bhagwan when it comes to one member it 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 just continues for generations and i think something similar with nishant as right you're born into parents who were into bhagwan right yeah. so tell me your connect with swami and uh, what has really pulled you to come to prashantin lem yeah so well like you said i was born basically born into it so my parents started taking me to our local center 
when I was like maybe two years old. Mm -hmm. So I would just sit in budgets. So <laughs> I was sitting budgets at the front where all the instruments were, but because I was like young, I'd get tired, so I'd go off to the back and sit for my dad's lap for the rest of the rest of the budgets. And that's, so every week it was basically that, and I just kept on going and started attending SSC, then budgets, and I think yeah, for me the main thing has been budgets because just the music side of it is something I really enjoy. Like, um, so I've learned tabla, so tabla, and like my brother plays harmonium, so it's that kind of music side I really enjoy. And I now all, all the <laughs> main the main thing I listen to now is just budgets like all the time, like even on the plane here. I just slept and listened to budgets the whole time. So it's just, I think that's the main thing. So yeah, when coming here, well, I've, I've been at uni, so coming to meetings and practices were, were a bit tough for me, but I, uh, I was able to be involved in the musical just by playing Manjiro. And to be involved and sat there and being part of that musical, it was, it was just a really nice experience. And yeah. Was, uh... when, when you think about it, uh, you know, Bhagwan started his mission through bhajan. Mm -hmm. You know, he did not start it with, the, mm, a discourse or a poem or a lecture. He started it with a bhajan, and I think uh, for a lot of people, bhajan is Bhagwan. Mm -hmm. And I think you know Nishant is a classic example of that. Uh, the moment you uh, listen to bhajans, you know, it, you just feel you are in the presence of Swami. And I think that that's an experience in the bhajan session also, right? In Prashanti also, and wherever we are, uh, when bhajans are going on. You automatically your mind goes to Bhagwan, uh, and I think that is uh, the power of the bhajans and the Sai Bhajan movement. Tell me, Prashant, um, you know, being involved with the organization, and you know, and I know you are very active in, in various activities of the organization too. You try to help in many ways. How has that helped you um, growing up as an individual? What are the different facets of your personality which has uh, you think? Um, blossomed or more pronounced now because of your involvement with the organization? So I think the biggest thing for me that has affected my personal life has been whenever I've gotten involved with, you know, service activities as well as budgets at the center. Um, because, you know, Swami says, you know, the more, you know, service that you you know, take part in you know sort of like reducing your ego um and i think that has really really helped me personally um when i think about my personal traits um as opposed to those who haven't been as fortunate to you know be a part of the side organization um i feel that i'm able to take part in activities um and think about the entire group as opposed to my personal gain from it. And I think that stems from doing activities in the center when you're taking part in a play, when you're singing for bhajan, you're doing it for Swami, not for yourself. And I think that same um, principle resonates when taking part in group activities in the workplace. You know, if you're um, working on a particular project in your team, I do notice that uh, maybe other people in the team might be doing this to better to better their uh, career progression as opposed to wanting what's best for the team, wanting the best output for their team. Um, and I think just those small, small differences um, have come from this part of my life um, that I've been blessed to be um, you know, involved with. Wow, and I think that's a very powerful point. You know, subordination of individual interest for group interest is one of the management principles mm -hmm. when you study MBA. And they're one of the first management principles. And, you know, uh, so you, so, and that comes sort of unconsciously into you uh, as you work in a SAI organization because you're doing everything together and you're doing for a common cause and you're doing for a divine cause. So you learn to feel for the other and learn to think about the other. I mean, in fact, you know, there's again a very beautiful thing when I was reading about uh, the top CEOs, especially the Indian CEOs, uh, who, have, who have really made it very big. They found that one common trait about all these people is this aspect of uh, empathy, is this aspect of being able to feel for the other. Uh, that's because of their um, uh, roots to uh, India and have been growing up in big families, you know, in traditional families, joint families. So you, you sort of, you, you always know to think about the other person because you're always living with so many. And I think 
uh, even though we have nuclear families at home we may not have one or two siblings we may have but i think mm. staying in the sai family you have a much bigger family mm. to experience that oneness right tell me ritesh <clears throat> you i know been been involved with so many um Uh, projects and in, in your professional life, you mm. you've tried many things, mm. uh, from software to project management to um, engineering. Yes. So tell me, how has being uh, a Sai youth or someone being in the Sai fold helped you in your profession? Yes. So um, it's uh, it only really sort of took off for me um, in in career wise from when. Um, we, I was here for the um, the 2015 UK Christmas pilgrimage, mm-hmm. um, and there wasn't a youth coordinator in Coventry Sai Centre, my local Sai Centre at the time, um, and I was getting uh, lovingly pressured by my elders <laughs> into, uh, <laughs> into accepting the role. Um, and I, I, being quite a timid personality, having a timid personality mm-hmm. at the time, I said, "I'm okay. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'll, I'll avoid it." But I, I don't know. I guess what. It maybe it was a divine push or something. Mm. Maybe a month later, at the beginning of 2016, when they announced the office bearers, I uh, initially reluctantly stepped forward to okay. to take the role. But it's only um, once once I once throwing myself in to to it that I that sort of really started to develop those the leadership qualities I'd never had before. Mm. That it was it was only that 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 sort of. That privilege of being the the youth coordinator, that f- good fortune, that great fortune, mm. um, it's it really improved my my leadership skills, my communication skills, listening skills. Um, th- this wouldn't have been possible, for example, b- before before twenty <laughs> sixteen. Um, yeah, it was, and I'm I'm so I'm so grateful for the, that youth coordinator role. It, it really changed my life. It really um, it really turned things mm. around for me. Mm. Um, so I wasn't doing any project management at work before that. I was just I was helping uh, um, other other people with their jobs. I was developing software rather than leading software, re- leading mm. software projects. But mm. that that really gave me the kick to sort of oh. to to really move on and sort of uh, okay. and to to manage um, software and really sort of have have that um, influence in in the workplace. Um, mm. That was yeah, uh, always grateful for that. But I guess even even before all that, my And this is, I think, true for the side of ETs I've spoken to as well. <clears throat> My colleagues would also would always say to me, "Ritesh, why why are you so happy? Why are you so, why are you smiling all the time?" Mm. Uh, and that and that might be because of the side organization. There's always something to look forward to, uh, mm. whether it's budgets at the end of the week or budget mm. practice on a on a mm. Wednesday or Thursday. Mm. Um, there was yeah, there was I had that real reason for 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 living and for us, or not not just living for thriving, almost mm. just a. Mm. And yeah, my my colleagues could see that. Um, and yeah, so it re- really speaks volumes for what the Sai organization, for what Swami's teachings do for all of us. Mm. Um, that those outside could 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 see it. Um, awesome. Also, can I ask you? You know, you are all at a stage in life where you have to give a lot of time to your career. You are young. You know, you have to focus on a lot of things. You know, uh, family, career. You know, a lot of things that you got to do at this age. and many times people feel that you know we we cannot really spare a lot of time now you know these are the time which where we need to sort out our life um so how do you see that is that a challenge you know trying to give time for the organization you know you got to achieve uh, in your academic pursuits or in your professional pursuits because this again this, this is the very crucial phase so how how do you see that and how do you balance that or does it really become a challenge you know trying to do both Yeah. Um, well, Nishant. I I haven't taken up a role as of yet. Um uh since so for for me well especially recently over the last like year or so I've met I've met like a lot of people within the UK side organization. So for me I've just accepted that my weekends I've just dedicated to to this organization. I'll spend the weekdays with my friends. Um so for in that case it's not too much. Sometimes it gets busy but Like I was saying, I book like usually it's for budgets or something, and I I don't usually complain if it's for for a budget <laughs> session. But um, I went. My mum she had the spiritual coordinator role at our centre, so I was helping her out a lot with that because she was obviously working as well. So just making the budget list, things like that, did take up some time. Just the thought process, having to ask people, but it's also I didn't mind doing it for my centre because I've been going there my whole life. 
So it's like having that sense has given me so much. It's also fair for me to give up some time to do something for them as well. I think I've been quite fortunate because shortly after I graduated, you know, COVID hit and um, not that COVID was a good thing, <laughs> just to clarify. Um, but but in that in that time period, um, Balvikas was happening over Zoom. Um, and at the time, you know, one of the teachers had to go on to maternity leave. And so they needed someone to sort of step in and fill that role. Um, and so, you know, someone from the center asked me to step in and I, you know, happily accepted because SSE was such a huge part of my upbring uh, upbringing. And um, I always, I always loved taking part in the plays and anything SSE related at the time. So I thought, you know, similar to Nishant here, that this would be a wonderful opportunity to give back to my center um, for everything they had done for me. Um, and so having stepped into that role of being an SSE teacher, um, just post COVID, uh, I've sort of maintained dedicating that, you know, one hour a week um, to the SAI organization as an SSE teacher. And I think having that regulated one hour on a Sunday in the afternoon has helped me to maintain a balance of dedicating some time to the organization, but then I can manage all my other responsibilities and goals around that time period as well. So for me, I think because we've been going to Budgeons every Sunday for like, you know, forever, <laughs> uh, I, I always assume that two hours, you know, it, it's gone. So it's, 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 it's a no compromise. Yeah. Like, you know, so that's already done. Yes, every Sunday. <laughs> even even before like people in my family could drive, someone would come and pick us up. So it was like, okay, I'm, I'm go- that it's, mm. it's been decided. I'm going there. So we have budgeons and then uh, Balduka straight afterwards. Mm. So once, you know, once I moved there and we found, we found a center and it was just, it was nice because for me, the majority of my friendships are people in the organization, you know, from mm. people I've known from a young age. So, you know, Swami talks about keeping good company. And mm. when you're thinking those like-minded thoughts, when you're mm. singing this, you know, budgets together, it, it gives you that good connection. The organization has helped me progress in a way because there's people from all types of, they all have various backgrounds. They all, they're all involved in various types of mm. careers. So there's always someone you can go to and ask, uh, you know, ask for advice, mm. and they're always very willing to offer it. So you yeah. have this larger family. Yes. Mm-hmm. So networking, you don't link, you don't need LinkedIn <laughs> when you have Swami. <laughs> so you have the side network. <laughs> exactly. And, and and that's more powerful, more trust, uh, trustworthy. Exactly. Uh, more reliable. <laughs> you know that the person <laughs> is not a bot <laughs> you know, trying to scam you, <laughs> mm. and it, it's they've always been there and mm. they've seen you grow up as well. And you've seen them, you know, from a young age, you know, mm. you can trust them. Mm. And I, I feel I, I have all these uncles and aunties mm. and brothers and sisters and mm. it, people of our generation as well, who are just willing mm. to mm. help us. And, you know, um, they do careers workshops, for example, mm. Mm. for, for students or school, so school children, who are about to go and think about what kind of degrees, what they want to pursue mm. after they finish school. And then people just a bit later, like what kind of jobs that they might mm. go for. And there are there are people who take their time out from their busy, busy schedules so, and they're willing to offer this, you know, it's free. Mm. You would think that if you go out, <laughs> yeah. this would probably be like worth a fortune. <laughs> and be- because it's not just about you dedicating your time because because you know they're dedicating their time as well I, I for me it feels like you know if they're all willing to give that time why shouldn't I do the same mm. and it's not even it's not a chore it's not mm. something you're you know you have to do it it's something you you want to do yes you know so Wow. I mean, uh, apart from this whole feeling that, okay, you know, I want to do something for Swami, I want to give back to the organization, but I think there are a lot of spin-offs like yes. this. <laughs> you have such a beautiful, large family, and it's so difficult in these days to actually find someone whom you can really trust mm. uh, uh, and to have this uh, 
whole uh, uh, beautiful uh, um, larger uh, family there whom you know you can reach out to and and they're all willing to be there with you you know whether you want to do something in your career whether you want to hang out you want to go on a vacation i think that's and and it is so nice and safe for you also because they are all in the same wavelength mm-hmm. and you know swami is always there how was it for you to do your rudram chanting vedam chanting you've been practicing and yes. you actually did it in yes. front of bhagwan <laughs> it, it has been even the build up to it because you know he lives like he lives about 4 hours away from the meeting point <laughs> i live an hour away from the meeting point everyone we would congregate near the end especially at least about once every once every week once every two Correct, weeks but yeah. and it was just also getting to know them after i i knew ritesh before but we didn't interact much so when, when we finally had the chance to get together and you know it was building our friendship up and focusing on chanting together uh, it was it was it was lovely to chant with with the prashanti mandir vedam group with the boys as well and You, you when you hear it on 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 youtube on 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 the uh, on um, spotify it's one thing mm. when you see it in live a uh, person <laughs> and you you can see the samadhi there and swami is just there and it's just completely new experience and any like you know we're young but we still get aches and pains when we're sitting down <laughs> for that long and then but once you once you're there chanting just it all fades away and then all, all you're thinking about is you know like swami please don't make me forget the words <laughs> and especially that first day we we were very very nervous but it, it it all you know he 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 ensured that it all went well for us and and um it it was just a wonderful experience i'm sure he can add yeah. he can add his two thoughts to it as well it was just it was, it, it was amazing Yeah it was it was it was it was hard it was hard work for for that sort of 40 45 minutes but it I mean boy was it worth it it was mm. <clears throat> the exhilaration we felt I I felt for the rest of the day I couldn't go to sleep at the end of the day because of the <laughs> exactly. adrenaline um, exactly yeah it was just amazing um just seeing the fine details of how our sort of uh, Prashanti Mandir um boys chant chant mm. vedam and, and being in sync with them was such mm. a fulfilling moment mm. after listening to all the youtube mm. <clears throat> daily like rag have said mm. um Yeah, it's just a fulfilling moment. If, if you can really chant it uh, with the proper intonations and with the proper grammar, um, even if you don't understand the meaning, what it can do to you is something very, very phenomenal. And mm. uh, there are any number of stories of the magic of chanting Rudram. Um, we don't have the time to go for it. But I think, you know, you yourself uh, are experiencing and probably will continue to experience more as the time goes by. Yes, yeah. it, we have immense respect for yeah. the Prashanti Mandir group because we, this is what a third day where we, where we've been given the chance to sit behind them, and it's just how they are able to do it every day, morning and afternoon. We're like at that high pitch as well. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's it, it, because it, it is draining. It it like you know your voice, your you can feel it in your stomach if you're doing it right, and it's and hopefully we're doing it right, yeah. uh, and it it it's it's been. it's been amazing just to experience that yeah. and nishant you've been playing bhajans and you've been so much part of the bhajan group there and to be able to now play in prashanti nilayam for the bhajan sessions how was that experience um well yeah it's, it's i don't know i can't explain it to you. I mean, it's just playing manjuras but i, I mean i already like, properly found out uh, earlier this week um but i've been going to like the practices and there were so many practices like i i'm i missed out on a lot because i was i've been at uni but from june onwards even since then there's just been practice at least once a week leading up to this and then since coming here every, like once or twice every single day up until we performed yesterday um so it's it's been a lot but it's when we were sat there doing it all the stress and all that tension was so worth it like everyone was so happy after because it just came out how we wanted it to so it was um it was worth it 100% worth the work we were asked to get involved in this unison bhajan where we'd sing together mm-hmm. it's very apt because that bhajan was in every moment of my life please be with me <laughs> and it, it it's true because it it when you collectively when you're collectively thinking about one thing which is coming to swami it definitely it definitely 
it recharges you it it focuses you on that on the path and the journey has been wonderful for all of us as we've been told now the journey only begins when the <laughs> pilgrimage ends <laughs> <laughs> so so it is always a journey exactly a never ending <laughs> destination road. is only when you merge with it <laughs> <laughs> but i think that that's so beautiful every moment of my life please be with me i think it's every moment of my life swami is with me mm-hmm. <laughs> and you begin to experience that more and more how about uh, concluding it by singing this two lines Ooh. yes yes every moment of my life please be with me in every single act of mine be thou my guide baba sai baba baba sai baba thank you swami thank you for everything that you continue to do for us and the way you continue to fill us with your love with your sweetness and with your blessings thank you everyone for your time for your beautiful words of inspiration and we pray to swami that this journey continues in the same joyful manner till one day we become one with the love that is thank you all sir sir